President Biden has granted pardons for, quote, all current U.S. citizens and lawful permanent residents who committed the offense of simple possession of marijuana in violation of the Controlled Substances Act, end quote. Now, while the announcement does not legalize marijuana, could it be a step in that direction? And if so, would that be a problem? Here with me to talk about this is Jamie Baluzerbi, Chief of Staff for Smart Approaches to Marijuana. Jamie, welcome to Washington Watch. Thank you so much, Joseph. It's great to be here. Now, quickly, what was your reaction when you heard the news that President Biden was going to uh, pardon all the possession offenses? Well, initially, I thought that's a very small number of people. And we've since found out that that's about 6,500 people over the course of 30 years. Because the truth is, is that there's just not a lot of people that are sitting in in jail for possession. There's zero people who are sitting in jail for federal prison for marijuana possession. Zero people got let out of jail yesterday. And so it fits a political narrative, but not really a practical one. Well, then that leads to the following question because we are weeks away from an election. And when you are weeks away from an election, everything has an electoral purpose. So from your perspective, one who tracks this issue, what would be the political benefit from the Biden administration making this announcement in the days leading up to the midterms? Well, this is all something that's going to gin up the base, right? This is something that, you know, people claim that they care about, but ultimately this is not something that's going to get most average Americans out to vote. Most people are more concerned with how much it costs to fill up their gas tank and how much it costs to put food on their table far more than than this issue. And, you know, while of course it is absolutely unacceptable that there are people who were in the wrong place at the wrong time, had you know one joint, and it just so happened they should not be walking around with a criminal record. But that's that's really not the narrative that's being pushed now. We're looking, we're not looking at smart decriminalization. We're looking at full blown legalization and commercialization, and that means we're making room for mostly the tobacco industry to come in to create another addictive substance to sell it to us as something that's not addictive and then to profit on it, because that's what they do. And let's talk about that, because there is concern that this is representative of a growing leniency toward marijuana and in a precursor to eventual, to eventual, excuse me, decriminalization at the federal level. You've been tracking this issue. We don't have to necessarily guess what the impact has been because many states have decriminalized uh, marijuana possession and in some cases uh, the sale of it as well. What have we learned from those states? Well, we've learned that we've been lied to. It doesn't work as well as people want you to believe that it does. You know, legalization isn't working. Now we've got this high potency marijuana product that, you know, 40, 50 years ago, THC made up about two to 3% of marijuana. Now there's products that are up to 99% THC potent. That means that there's things are more addicting. There's more risk with this and more risk and more people being, you know, having access to substances is not turning out well. There's more DUIs, there's more poison control calls because children are finding these gummies that look like candy and consuming them and ending up in the emergency room. There are, you know, the illicit market has not been solved by this issue. This legalization actually enables the black market. The black market can't be regulated away. The this just gives law enforcement fewer tools to use. And this really isn't a moneymaker for states either. So it's really been a disappointment everywhere. I don't think anybody would say that it's working exactly the way that they thought it would. Well, and I know in the states that have legalized it, one of the great incentives for legislators to legalize it is this sense that you are going to uh, financially profit. The state will benefit. And in some cases, they've tried to fund educational programs through revenues raised by marijuana, but you say that's not working, why not? Well, I mean, just look at the lottery, right? This is something that much like the lottery is sold to people as a moneymaker, but it's not a moneymaker because it costs more than it brings in. In uh, Colorado Christian University several years ago did a really interesting and thorough study that found that for every $1 that marijuana brings in in tax revenue, Coloradans spend $4.50 offsetting those effects. And that's really the pattern that we're seeing in other states that have legalized. This is not an isolated thing. It's not something that you can just 
open up to your citizens and expect nothing to happen. Like I said, we see more poison control calls. We see more children that have accidental ingestion. We've got you know, kids now that are consuming marijuana and are dropping out of high school. That's a cost that is going to continue to cost us as a society for the next, you know, however many decades. So it's just not, it's not as easy as it looks. Jamie, if you could, um, what you mentioned, the uh, cost for every dollar that is raised, four and a half dollars that are expended. What are those costs that the taxpayers are bearing because of legalization? Well, it's the cost of more car crashes on the road. Like I said, more dropouts, more hospitalizations. People are, uh, I recently just found out that young people who consume marijuana in higher potency marijuana regularly, many of them are now showing up to emergency rooms with cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome. This is just aggressive throwing up with, you know, no medical reason why, other than just this use of high potency marijuana. And so there are real physical effects that our healthcare system is now having to absorb. Law enforcement are not happy with this either because this really just takes fewer options away from them. And I really believe that the goal of good drug policy should be to increase access to treatment and decrease access to harmful substances. And legalization really just falls short there. Jamie Balouzerbi, thank you so much for stopping by today to help us. I know we'll follow up on this later. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Joseph.